This card is useless in the Cook Islands, so leave it at home. Hello fellow travelers or explorers, if you prefer that term. If you've watched my earlier videos showcasing the enchanting Cook Islands, you're probably stunned by the island's beauty and eager to plan your own visit. This video holds particular significance, especially for those traveling from Canada and the United States. However, before you start charting your course, take a moment to watch this video. I'll be shedding light on 10 vital considerations before you set out on your adventure. So without further delay, let's get started. Number 1. Right now, there are no non-stop flights from the US mainland to Rarotonga. This stands as a significant challenge, especially considering the limited number of airlines serving the main island Rarotonga. The alternative involves a longer trip routing through the west coast to New Zealand or Fiji before reaching Rarotonga. This not only incurs additional costs but also consumes valuable travel time. Opting from Hawaiian Airlines from the West Coast with a connection in Honolulu International to Rarotonga is the most economical and efficient choice. However, it's important to note that Hawaiian Airlines operates this route just once a week, exclusively on Saturdays, departures from Honolulu and Sundays for returns from Rarotonga. Despite this limitation, it stands out as the optimal choice for travelers originating from the continental US. Number 2. There are no international hotel chains such as Hilton, Hyatt, Marriott or Four Seasons present in the Cook Islands. I was personally taken aback when attempting to secure accommodation for our initial visit. It seemed inconceivable that such a stunning destination lacked the presence of renowned hotel brands. While there are no regulatory barriers preventing international hotel brands from establishing themselves on the islands, one contributing factor may be the Cook Islands land tenure system. Local ownership of land coupled with restrictions that prevent selling or leasing for durations exceeding 60 years could account for the absence of major hotel brands. Nevertheless, the absence of well-known brands doesn't translate to a shortage of lodging options. Through my research, I discovered approximately 25 resorts and hotels with a concentration in Rarotonga and Aitutaki Islands. These accommodations span a spectrum from budget-friendly to luxury, offering diverse choices for visitors. I previously featured three types of accommodations, budget-friendly, family-friendly, and luxury in a separate video. If you haven't watched it yet, you can find the link in the description. Number 3. The optimal period to visit the islands is from April to November, encompassing the driest months with warm and pleasant temperatures for exploration. In contrast, December to March is the wet season, characterized by a heightened probability of rainfall. It's advisable to steer clear of these months if your intention is to explore the islands extensively rather than being confined to your resort due to rain. However, given the tropical climate, even in the dry months, brief showers are not uncommon. During our May visit, a light drizzle accompanied our bicycle excursion. Despite the gloomy day, the mild rain provided relief from the heat, and we thoroughly enjoyed exploring Rarotonga on bikes. I've created a video highlighting some of the best excursions you can undertake during your visit. You can find the link in the description. The costliest period to visit are the initial two weeks of July and the initial weeks of October. This spike in cost is attributed to school holidays in Australia and New Zealand, prompting families to flock to the islands for vacations. To escape the crowds and benefit from a lower prices, consider planning your visit between April to June or September to October. Number 4. Mosquitoes inhabit the islands. That's right, you heard it correctly. Mosquitoes are present in the Cook Islands, and they seem to have a particular appetite for tourist blood. <laughs> Even within the confines of your hotel room, mosquitoes may make an appearance. Hence, it becomes crucial to shield yourself from mosquito bites by carrying repellents Number 5. And brace yourself! There is no complimentary internet on the islands. While you will have free Wi-Fi access in your hotel, you'll need to purchase data for internet access. Unfortunately, unlimited data plans are not available. The data pricing is rather cheap by the way. 
at 20 New Zealand dollars for 5 gigabytes of data. But the internet speed is frustratingly slow. Oh, really slow. Be prepared for this. If you plan on working remotely during your vacation and require fast internet, good luck. <laughs> Number 6. Do not forget to pack a travel outlet adapter if you are coming from the United States. It's crucial. Otherwise, you won't be able to charge your electronics. The wall outlets used in Cook Islands are the same as those in Australia and New Zealand. Hotels won't provide adapters, and finding one on the islands can be a challenge. Travel power adapters are quite affordable. I recommend this compact all-in-one international plug adapter. Just slide to the appropriate plug and it includes USB and USB-C ports. One interesting feature I noticed is that their power outlets here have an on and off switch. Interesting, right? Number 7. Let's talk about the currency. First of all, leave your American dollars at home or in your wallet because they are not widely accepted here. The really? official currency of the Cook Islands is the New Zealand dollar. It's advisable to carry cash for day-to-day -day use, especially if you plan to buy from small shops and most importantly if you intend to eat at Murray Night Market as they only accept cash. If you can't bring New Zealand dollars with you, don't worry. There are plenty of ATMs where you can withdraw New Zealand dollars. And the transaction fee is usually less than what you pay at ATMs in the United States. Accommodations, rental companies, and tour operators accept credit cards. But one card to leave at home or in your wallet is American Express, as it's not widely accepted on the islands. Number 8. It's important to note that tipping is not customary or expected on the Cook Islands. I experienced this firsthand when I tipped the driver who took us from the airport to the hotel. He seemed genuinely surprised. When I handed him the money, he examined it for a minute or two, possibly confused about the gesture. While tipping is not a common practice, if you feel inclined to tip for exceptional service, especially at places like restaurants, the choice is entirely yours. I personally tip the Filipino staff working at the restaurants in Pacific Resort, Rarotonga. Number 9. If you're considering renting a car or a scooter for island exploration, keep in mind that the Cook Islands follow left-hand driving. Exercise caution, especially if you're accustomed to right-hand driving, as in United States. Getting lost in Rarotonga is quite unlikely given that there's a single main road circling the island called Aratapu, meaning sacred road. For those not renting a vehicle, the public bus is a convenient option with two routes, one clockwise and the other anti-clockwise. Bus fares are affordable and services operate every day except Sundays. Why no bus on Sundays? This leads me to my 10th crucial point. Sunday is a day of rest. This tradition is rooted in Christian religion. This means that on Sundays, most businesses, government offices, and even buses circling the island are closed. The island became notably serene on Sundays, with only a few vehicles on the main road. In fact, when we sought lunch outside of the Raratongan where we were staying, we had to walk approximately 20 minutes to reach Maori Cafe near Cavera Convenience Store, one of the rare restaurants open on Sundays. So, there you have it, my top 10 essentials to know before exploring the captivating Cook Islands. I trust you gain valuable insights for your upcoming vacation. To discover my recommended accommodations, click on the thumbnail. Until our next journey, fellow travelers, bye for now.